Well, James, I must be in the same boat as you. I can't remember, actually, the last time I saw lions, so it was a bit of a shock to see them. In fact, Herman spotted them before I did, so my eyes are not as that good with them either. So we shall sit down this evening and replay the footage and go through it together and remind ourselves what exactly these tawny beasts are and how they work. But whatever they were seeing just now is obviously of not too much concern because they've all just lay down and decided it's time to rest again and here comes one of the little cubs from behind mom it might be coming to see if there's a chance to get a bit of milk now they're looking quite thin so it does look like they could do with a meal definitely the cubs are not full and fat bellied like they can be and they're going through that phase now in life where they do get quite skinny when they're first born lion cubs are always so fluffy and fat and they look really really healthy and then they go through this kind of stage where they go between sort of six months and a year and they always look a little bit scraggly at that time they kind of thin out a little bit and then by the time they reach a year old they start to fill out again and start to look like this adult that's a busy approaching now and doesn't she look spectacular Paul, you want to know if all six cubs are here? I'm not sure. Oh, isn't that great? Amber Eyes is here as well. So this is Amber Eyes that's just lying down. So she's been separated from the Inkahumas for quite a while, so I'm quite glad to see her, which means that all five of the adults are, must be here, because I can see four adults in front, and there looks like another adult in the back. And I think all six cubs are here. The last I heard that there was all six, which was a few days ago, so I would imagine that all six are here. At the moment, I can only see three cubs, but that's not to say that there aren't more. The grass is so long that some of these cubs can be lying down and you won't see anything. So I think the other three are maybe at the back somewhere. So we'll just see. The sun is busy moving and so where they were lying, they've unfortunately lost a bit of shade there. So it's getting a bit hot and that's why they've moved closer to where we are. And so hopefully as they do, we'll be able to count them in and see if we've got all six cubs and all five lionesses. But great to see Amber is here as well. She's got to be one of my favorite lionesses. Her eyes are incredible. She's unfortunately closing them right now, so we can't show you exactly what I mean, but her eyes are almost the color of a cheetah's eyes. It's this deep amber color, which is not that common. The rest of her pride does not share that characteristic. There's none of them that are the same. She did have a daughter at one stage that had those eyes, but unfortunately the daughter was killed by the Birminghams when the Birminghams took over, and so she lost that daughter. But the rest of the pride is all quite light-colored eyes, a more golden color. There you can see, and she is an impressive lioness. She's very powerfully built, quite a large female. And when I've seen her involved in some hunting, she's generally the one that's right at the front, leading what's going on and making sure she's in the thick of the action all the time. But she looks really good. They, I think they've fed on something quite small recently. They've all got like small little bumps on their tummies. Nothing major. In Amber Eye's case, it might be that she's starting to show signs of pregnancy. I can't see very nicely, but given all the mating that she's done, maybe she's pregnant. It would be interesting if she is. Now, I was talking to Brent the other day, and Brent was saying to me that he reckons that Amber Eyes hasn't had any litters of cubs. I don't know if anybody knows if that's 100% true, but as far as I know, she hasn't raised a set of cubs. So I wonder if maybe she has a problem in that she can't actually produce It'd be interesting to know. She definitely has mated a lot with the Birminghams. I've seen her a few times mating, and as of yet, she hasn't produced anything. What's also going to be interesting is if the youngest female is present with them. The last time I saw the youngest female, she was mating with one of the Birmingham boys last week, or sorry, two weeks ago, um, and she was separated off by herself. So I wonder if she managed to find her way back to the Pride and whether or not that mating has been successful or not. Now we won't tell just yet if she only mated a few weeks ago. It's going to be too early for us to even know if she's been fertilized, but within the next month or two, we should start to see that belly swelling slightly. And by the time she reaches about two, two and a half months, then you can tell for sure because the belly really swells in a different area to what it would swell if there was food in the belly. But I can see some more cubs now playing in the back as well. So, Crystal, the lion cubs now, there's two different, um, well, three different litters in this cub, 
in this set of cubs. Um, so the older ones are about eight months. They were born in May last year. Um, so actually they're getting on a little bit now. I suppose we're into March already, so they're nine months. And then the younger ones are about seven months then. They were born a little bit later in June. So of the younger set though, I think only one of them survived. There was three that were born and the other two unfortunately were the ones that died from a rare muscle disease that came about because of the drought. So even though in the time of drought, the prey animals get weak and it becomes a lot easier for the predators to catch and find food, it also brings about issues for the predators because the prey animals are so malnourished and they've got no food and, and they've got no condition on them, there's very little nutrients in their meat. And so the lions were killing buffalo more and more and more and more, but they actually weren't gaining the nutrients that they needed. And they got this muscle disease called white muscle disease, which is basically a deficiency of vitamin E. And unfortunately, the younger cubs, because they were still quite small, their body wasn't able to deal and cope with that. And they unfortunately died. So it's left us with the six that we have today. So Kelly, the cubs will suckle from their mothers. I mean, they, they're a little bit cheeky. They try and suckle for as long as possible, but generally they're starting to get weaned already from about five months. And once they reach sort of six months, they're pretty much off the milk. Although I have seen a three-year-old male suckling from a, a mother that had another set of cubs. So she was had her next set of cubs and he was still suckling. But generally it would be between sort of six and eight months they'll be completely weaned off and will no longer be suckling milk at all and will be onto solids. And most of these cubs are the same. Um, the last time I saw the Inca Huma Pride, there was one female that was still producing a little bit of milk and the cubs were trying to suckle and they were moaning because I don't think much milk was actually coming out. And the rest of the females, they have no visible signs of producing milk. So I think the rest of them have stopped production. And so most of them are actually weaned at this stage. But Paul, to answer your question, it looks like all six. So I've counted now five different cubs. So Darwin, this is a very common question that we get, and it's to do with male lions and where they are and why aren't they with the pride. Well, in this particular area that we're in, we don't see that typical male lion, females, cubs, pride situation. What we get here mostly is male coalitions, so groups of males that spend time together and roam around in these areas and occupy quite large tracts of land. And they've figured out if they stay together that they're going to be able to dominate large areas which will be access to multiple different prides. And so they will then be mating with lots more females than if they broke apart and it was just one with each pride. So the males that are the ones that produce these cubs are the Birmingham males and at the moment, I don't know where the fourth one is, but three of them, they actually walked past Juma last night and they were roaring their lungs out at, from about, I would say, 12 o'clock. They were roaring because we were out doing tests with um, some new camera gear that we're busy trying out uh, to see if we can actually do some stuff in the dark without lights, which is quite exciting. But we were doing it and, it, um, and they were roaring from about 12 until about 3 in the morning. And then they eventually crossed into Biffle's Hook. And from there, they met up with the Torchwood Pride. Now, the Torchwood Pride is a pride that is starting to push more and more and more into the Sabi Sands. And it's quite a large pride. It's uh, nine females and ten cubs. So there's 19 there. And they joined up with the Torchwood Pride and then crossed into the Kruger National Park. And so no one has seen them today. Um, but they will move quite big distances. And that's why I was saying it's quite an advantage to be in a coalition. Because as males, they can join up. And now those... Four males instead of being sharing five males between uh, five females between them they now can share these five females the three females from the sticks pride the nine females from the torchwood pride and if there's any other prides that come around this area they'll then incorporate them too so it makes much more sense than breaking apart by yourself and having to fight off other males on your own then as to stay together in a group of four occupy a big area and have access to a lot of females and a lot of resources in terms of water and food But I think this is pretty much how these lions will spend the afternoon. I think they are going to be very, very flat and sleepy. It's still very warm. Although I reckon around sunset, these guys are going to start to wake up and move around. 
So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with them. I reckon that they're going to be hunting this afternoon with that small tummies that they've got. Um, I reckon that there's definitely going to be some movement tonight. So I think we'll stick around and see what they do. So while we watch them sleep away, let's go across to Taylor. 